Hey everybody! Today, Rado runs through Robin Run, which is a new cooperative game of deductions and burglary. And I'm going to be showing you how it works today in a two-player run-through. Although, before we go on, I strongly recommend you turn your subtitles onto the Klingon channel so that when I make rules goofs, you'll know what they are. Okay, have you done so? Then, welcome to the city which we are desperately trying to get rid of. Here is the situation. We are a group of thieves. You know, bank robbers, casino heist experts, you name it. And the cops are on to us. You can see here they are at the beginning, at the end of the trail. Here we are, and we are trying to make it as quickly as possible to the airport to get away. But, as we try to get out of town with the cops hot on our trail, we are trying to rob as many safes as possible because they will give us more gold. And we need that gold to up our chances of being able to rob more safes. Because the more safes we successfully rob, the further up the road we will get. No doubt because we have to pay off informants and all kinds of stuff to be able to get out. So, that's the situation. But here's the problem. Because the cops are on to us, we are all separated throughout the city, and we can only every once in a while come together to rob a casino or a bank or whatever. And while we are preparing for the jobs, we have very limited means of communication as a group. We can't all just say, right, you bring the uh, jackhammer and I'll bring the TNT, and Bob, you over there, you bring the, uh, the, the fake IDs that we need to get into the building. We can't coordinate effectively because if we communicate too much, if we get together, we're going to be caught. So, this is a deduction game where players are giving out little bits of information and trying to intuit the rest so we can have successful bank robberies. And I'm going to show you how it works. And here's the deal. The game is going to play over several rounds, and at the beginning of every round, one of the players is the boss. And they get this very, very cool screen. And so, I'm going to start out being the boss, and Jen is going to be my crew. So, in a two-player game, there's just a boss and there's a crew. After we go through our first break-in to one of these buildings, in the next one, it'll be Jen's turn to be the boss, and I'll be the crew. But with more players, of course, the boss just you know goes from player to player to player after each attempted break-in. All right, so I'm the boss. I've got this little thing. This is what Jen can see. She can just see um, the front of the car. And now, we've got to pick which building are we going to break into. Now, there's a lot of stuff that goes into that decision. First of all, there's the fact that some buildings have two safes, and some buildings have only one safe. A one safe job is going to be implicitly easier and safer, but it's not going to pay off as well. And so, if we go for a, if we risk and go for a double, we can get a really big payout. Plus, if we get two safes broken, we get to move forward two spaces. If we only get one safe, we only move forward one. And the cops will always move forward one at least every single single time. There's a little reminder here at the end of the round to determine who moves forward and all that kind of stuff. So, we've got to decide, are we going to go for a single safe or a double safe building? And then the other thing we have to consider is the fact that there are four underworld nefarious dealers who apparently hide inside of fire hydrants. And they can help us out. They are something that we can use our gold on to be able to get ourselves out of a jam. And um, they will not show up until we have cleared out all of the safes that are on their portion of the city. So, if we want to go to the yellow dealer, we've got to attempt to rob all three of these safes. And then, at the end of that round, we can spend gold to this dealer to help us with yellow cubes or green cubes, white cubes, or red cubes. What does that mean? Well, over here on the police station, we've got a tracker um, that shows how tight the, uh, the dragnet is at catching us. The more cubes, every time we move forward and we hit one of these, we have to transfer these cubes over here. The more cubes there are over here, the tougher it is for us to move forward. And the interesting thing about the game is, it comes with six distinct scenarios that you can set up that determine where the dealers are and how many cubes are in the different space on the road and which cubes are on the police station. I'm choosing the third scenario today. What's it called? It's called 
Empty pockets. Where? Bad times. We are short on tools. Can we handle this challenge? Uh, it's the third toughest one. They get tougher the higher you go. And actually, the game also comes with rules to be able to create your own scenarios once you understand the basics of the game. So this game has huge replayability. Because each scenario, there's different setups for how the cubes will come out, uh, how many cubes we start out with. In this case, three green cubes on the board means we're not going to have very many tools. If there were no cubes, at the beginning of every Every round, the, the team gets 12 cards, 12 tool cards in their hand. But because their tools are scarce, we're only going to get six, and that's really going to cramp our style. But instead, it might have been green cubes over here and different things blocked. Uh, the red alarm might have been filled up more, or the yellow um, you know, limiter or talking. But anyway, this is the way we set up. Oh, and the other thing a scenario determines is what are the six main avenues of communication we have? Uh, like I said, in, in, the, in the case of this one, oops, where'd it go? In the case of this one, uh, we start in, it, with a two-player game. We start with these six clues uh, in a three to five player game. I think it goes up to five players, doesn't it? it we, get, we start with these clues. So I've got these clues set up. Uh, these, these cubes are on the police station, and these cubes are on the road waiting to tighten the uh, noose around our necks a little bit more. So that's the situation. Now here's the deal. Because we've got all these green cubes here, which means we don't have access to very many tools, I think we want to clear out these three buildings as fast as possible to get to the green dealer. Because if we, the sooner we can get to him, the sooner we can pay him either two or five cubes to get rid of one or two of these. If we could pay this guy, I'm sorry, five, you know, two plus three is if we could pay him five gold and we start with three, we could clear off two of these cubes, which means we can start every robbery with 10 cards in our hand instead of six. And as you imagine, that might be the more tools we've got, the better. So I think we want to focus on these buildings to get to that green dealer. The next question, do we go for a simple single job or a tougher one? I think, let's go big, folks. Let's go for a double job. All right, the boss, whoever is the boss in this round chooses. I have chosen this, and now I take these two safes, I put them back here, and nobody but me is allowed to see them. And what I'm looking at here is the tools that the rest of my team, in this case, Jen, has to collect. Uh, and it was one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Jen needs to present nine total tools to be able to break into these two safes. If she can do it with me giving her clues along the way, we'll score five gold. And if we get through both of these, we'll move forward two on the track closer to safety. So, wish me luck, folks. This is the situation. We're going to try to crack these. For the static cam folks, here is what we need. All right. So, anyway. So, how does this work? We're going to start, and the first thing we have to do is we have to prepare to rob this location where, as you can see, setup said that there are two tools. Um, and the, uh, the, the everybody on my team except for me, so in this case, Jen draws six tool cards. One, so you can imagine why she'd like to be drawing more. One, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, and as you can I also imagine, if we were playing a three-player game, um, you know, you know if, if, and there were no greens, each player would draw nine tools, or eight, or seven. But in this case, in a, in a two-player game, it's 12, eight, uh, 12, 10, 8, or 6, and it's 6. It's the worst it could possibly be. We need to get more tools from this dealer to get rid of some of these cubes. So Jen has drawn her six cards. I don't get to know what they are, and anybody else on the team, if Jen is just one of several crew members trying to um, put forward the right tools, nobody knows what anybody has. It's all secret information all around. Because again, we can't talk. If we all meet together to plan, we'll get arrested. That's why we're all on the run. We all have to stay on the down low. And every once in a while, I can give clues out to everybody. And then everybody else has to figure out what I mean. So that's what Jen's got to do. Me, I've got to determine how many of my six clues are available. And at the beginning, this yellow thing says, I have all six clues available. But if, say, a couple of yellow cubes had come out, like say this and this, I would only have four of my six uh, clues available to give. And what would happen is I would shuffle all these up and I would reveal four of them and two of these would randomly not be available. Now as it is, I have all the clues, which is good because I'm going to need them to help Jen figure out what tools. So uh, Jen has drawn her six. I've got all six of mine. 
and we are ready for me to start giving clues. Now, we're going to play through several rounds where I give clues based on these, and then Jen takes that information and decides to play cards from her hand to add them to the supply of tools that we're trying to collect. So, uh, and now, I go first. I give her. I can give her. I can give her all six clues if I want. Every time I give a clue, it's gone. I can't give it again. But as you'll notice, once I've once I've given this clue out, if I wanted, I could spend three gold to get the clue back so that I could give it to her again. And you can see why that would be useful. Um, telling Jen using this clue, if uh, you don't need to use, let's see. Let's look at what Jen needs. Jen needs jackhammers, battering rams, acid and TNT. Jen doesn't need flashlights. So if I use this, I could say, you don't need, and I, it's, I could say whatever I want, I could say flashlights. And then this would be gone. And then uh, later on, if I spent the three gold, I could get this back, and then I could tell her, you don't need something else. I could really help Jen whittle down what she needs. But we need to save this gold for when we meet the dealer, because we want the gold then to be able to pay him to get rid of these cubes over here. So anyway, I can now start giving clues. And which ones am I going to give? First of all, I'm going to use this one. You need to have X tools. Jen needs to know this. And again, let's see. If we look at this, 5 plus 4, Jen needs 9 total. So I'm going to tell Jen, you need, we need to pull this job off, we need a total of 9 tools. You can see here's an example. If these were the two safes, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, you would need 8 tools. So I'm going to use this, tool, this clue and tell Jen, you need 9 total tools. So that's the first bit of information. She has no idea what types of tools she needs, though. So I will go on ahead. Oh, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to use this clue as well. I choose one crew member. In this case, it's Jen, because if, there, if I was playing with multiple players, I would choose from several. I choose one crew member, and I look at the tools they've got in their hand, and then I decide whether that's a good hand or not. Because if it's not a good hand, I'll have her dump it and redraw. So let's do this as well. So normally, I don't have any idea what's in Jen's hand, or anybody's hand. But I'm going to take a look-see, so I know what Jen's got. She, all right, she's got a flashlight. We, I know she doesn't need flashlights. She doesn't need ID cards. She does need... Um, now, I can't be explaining this. I'm just looking at this in silence. I know she needs acid. She doesn't need stethoscopes. She needs a battering ram. She, oh my god. Of the six cards she's got, only two of them are any good. If she tries to provide any of these, this, can, this could get us busted. Every time Jen plays a card that is wrong, that is not one of the ones we need, the cops get closer to busting us, which is based on this red meter. Once Jen makes, in this case, five bad guesses, we, um, the, you know, the job is over and we have to beat feet. <laughs> Two-thirds of Jen's cards are crap! I mean, so I'd like her to keep these, but it's one or the other. I can let her keep this whole hand or dump the whole hand and draw six. This is too dangerous a hand. I'm going to have her dump all of these. All of these go away, and Jen's going to replace it with six new ones. One, two, and they should all go face down. Because um, you know, if I was playing with other players and I took Jen's hand, uh, nobody else knew what was in Jen's hand. So they all got gotten rid of. One, two, three. Four, five, six. So hopefully Jen has a better hand that is available. So, so far, I've used two of my clues. Now, here's the other thing. If Jen had had a better uh, coordination, I might have let her keep her hand, and then I would have used this to tell her, um, hey, by the way, you don't need stethoscopes. Yeah, because maybe she had three stethoscopes, and I handed her back, and she had three, and I'd say, you don't need stethoscopes. She would know not to waste her time with those, as an example. But okay, so now she's got a totally new hand. I can keep giving her clues if I want. I have no idea what's in her hand. I could tell her um, one of the things it's not. Um, let's see. I could also tell her that more tools of a given type are required, but that's only based on tools she's already played. She hasn't played any tools yet. Once she, if she plays a single jackhammer, remember, she needs four of them. If she plays a single jackhammer later on, I could tell her, you need three more um, all right. You need three more of a tool that's already been played. So then she could figure out which of the tools um, you know, that she might still need. Uh, but I can't tell her exactly which tool. All right. Uh, you need, or I could tell her, you need tools from this group, this group, or this group. Now, as it is, Jen needs battering rams in this, so she needs heavy equipment. She needs acid, but not tea, and she needs acid and tea needs. She needs heavy equipment, she needs chemical stuff, but Oh wow, she doesn't need any modern tech. She doesn't need a flashlight or an ID badge or a stethoscope. So she needs, so later on, in fact, I mean, I could give her this clue right now and tell her you need heavy equipment because she needs a lot of this. 
And so she would feel confident with what's in her hand playing. She'd feel more confident playing these than playing anything else. I could tell her that, but again, I don't know what she's got. Also, one more thing, I could choose a member of her crew and I will answer one yes or no question. Jen has no questions right now. So what could she possibly ask? So I'm going to wait. I think I'm done. I'm just used these two tools. I'll save my other tools for later, my clues for later to help her narrow down. So the clue phase is over and now the crew phase begins and Jen starts playing cards. How many? Well, as you can see, because we haven't put any white ones down, Jen has to play two cards to the pot. To, to add them to um, the collection of tools we're trying to get ready to rob these safes. Now, the more this fills up, the tougher it gets because, you know, this means Jen only has to make two guesses. But the more it fills up, Jen would have to make three or even four guesses. And remember, the more times she guesses wrong, the closer we are to getting arrested. If she makes five mistakes, it's over. So, Jen, can Jen only has to play two. So Jen now has a hand, she's going to play two. Now, if we were playing with more characters, Jen would have cards, the other players would have cards, Jen would play one, and then another player would play one, and then we'd, we'd stop and we'd see how many were right or wrong. Although, again, if we were playing with more players, um, you know, if we were playing with a group of three players, that means there'd be a boss and two crew members. Those two crew members would each have to play two, because there'd need to be a total of four played. But since it's just a two-player game, there's only Jen, she's got to play two cards from her hand. All right, so. What is she going to play? Now again, I don't know what they are. I'm not supposed to know what they are. So I'm going to give you guys the experience of what this game is like from the boss's perspective. I have no idea what Jen is thinking. Let's just have her take a look and see what she's going to play based on what's in her hand. Jen will play... All right, so the way it would work, if we were playing with more players, Jen would play one, and then another player would play one, and then maybe another player, until we hit the thing, and then we would reveal them all. Now, it's interesting. When you're doing this round robin thing, you have a choice as a player. You can either play one from your hand, or if you don't like what's in your hand, because you've started to figure out what's good and what's bad based on clues, you can dump your entire hand and redraw. You can do that once per round. Um, but Jen, does, Jen has no information about what's good or bad, so she's not going to do that. Also, you could pass. If Jen wasn't sure what to play, but she thinks her teammate knows what to play, she could pass so that her teammate would play the first card into the pot. But as it is, Jen has no teammates. So, she just plays one, and then it comes back around to her, and she's going to play another one. She could have dumped her hand and redrawn, but she... Okay, so she's played. We have now put the two into the pot that we needed, and now we get to the alarm phase, where me, the boss, I take these, I look at all of them, and here's the thing. If I was playing with multiple crew members, if Jen and um, Daisy and Gertrude had all played their cards, I would take them all, and nobody would know what anybody else has played. I wouldn't know what anybody's played, because I'd have to take them, shuffle them up, and so I wouldn't know who played what. So there's all these levels of, you know, lack of knowledge. But here's what I do is, I take these, if it was a good tool, I put it into the success pile. If it was a bad tool, I put it into the miss pile. So, Jen has one good tool, because remember, we need three total acid, and she took a stab with stethoscope. That's bad. That is one fail. Remember, if we have five fails, it's over and we've got to run. So, all right, and that was it. Jen is done. And now, here's the interesting thing. If we, since we're playing a two-player game, at the end of this round, before we start the next round, where I give more clues and Jen plays more, Jen draws cards equal to how many she played. She played two, she draws two more. All right, and again, I don't know what they are. It doesn't work that way with more players. With more players, there are shuffled into the deck these bag cards. If somebody played a bag card, when I reveal it and find out what it is, that means everybody gets to draw more cards. So these bag cards are shuffled through the deck every once in a while they get added. So that's how players refill their hands. But in a two-player game, there's no bag cards. The hand just refills automatically every round. So Jen's drawn her two to make up for her two. She had one success. She had one failure. And here's the interesting thing. Jen knows this is a failure. Because Jen was the only one who knew this. Now, if we were playing with more players, and there were some successes, and there was a failure, one player would know what that one failure is because they put it in. None of the other crew members would know what that is. But since we're playing a two-player game, we've got this little visual memory aid where because Jen now knows for a fact that, oh, the stethoscope was bad, Jen can go on ahead and mark stethoscopes are bad. Now, she would not be able to do that with more players unless the nature of this information was everybody knows stethoscopes are bad. Um, because in this case, if Jen 
Jen and Gertrude were both members of the team, and all of Gertrude's were good and one of Jen's was bad. Jen would know stethoscope's bad. She would have to keep that information to herself. And the thing is, I wouldn't know, did Jen or Gertrude play the stethoscope? So I wouldn't know which of them knows that stethoscopes is bad. But in a two-player game, you have more information. So anyway, so Jen knows stethoscopes are bad, and I know she knows stethoscopes are bad. So I don't worry about her playing those anymore. All right, so uh, we are back, and now I continue giving clues. I've still got four to choose from. And I want to help Jen narrow it down a little bit more. So I'm going to tell her, you do not need, and I'm not going to say stethoscopes because she already knows that. I'm going to tell her, you do not need, oh, I'm going to tell her you don't need ID cards. And now, here's the thing. Even if we were playing with lots of players, everybody would have heard me say, you don't need ID cards. So we'd mark this. Everybody knows that, okay, we need some combination of acid, flashlights, dynamite, battering rams, and jackhammers. Now, of course, we don't need flashlights, but Jen doesn't know that because um, I've just given her some information. Also, I'm going to use more tools are required for one type of tool that has already been played. Hmm. Okay, well, no, actually, that's not really good right now. Uh, if I use this right now, I would say the number one. I would tell her, one of your tools needs more. So I'd be telling her that she needs more acid, but I wouldn't be telling her how many. Like in this example, um, where in this example, this is what's already been played publicly, and it, you, more flashlights and jackhammers are needed, but no more battering rams are needed. Uh, you know, I would use this clue, I would say two, and um, then the team would know, okay, one of these three we need to stop filling out, but they wouldn't know which one. I could use this right now to let Jen know, for guaranteed, for certain, with certainty, she needs more acid. Or I could wait till she's got more positive ones in play. I think I will just use this right now, because the thing is, I know she needs a lot more acid, so I'm going to burn this right now and say, you need more of one type of tool. She knows then she needs more acid, because that's the only type of tool out here. Okay. Now also, I could let her answer a yes-no question. I could um, give her this information as well. But she knows she needs more acid. I just told her that with the other clue. She needs TNT, but I don't want. I'm going to wait for this for later. I'm going to wait on this for later as well. So I'm done giving clues, and once again, Jen has got to start playing. And still, it's two cards. Jen is going to go on ahead and play these two cards. Okay, and now I take them and we take a looky loo. And I'm like, oh yeah, baby. She just played two acid, and here's what I'm going to do. They were both correct. Because remember, we needed a total three. I'll put them both here. And now here's the thing, though. I cannot, I have no way of telling Jen, okay, we're good on the acid. You don't need to play any more acid because we need exactly three. If she plays more acid after this, then the, the additional acids will go into the misses. All right, so Jen played her two. Now she has to draw two more. And I mean, for her, it was a gamble. She could have played one acid and something else, but she was thinking because I used this whole clue, just a clue around on one thing, she figured we probably need a bunch of acid. She played um, two acid and it paid off. Okay, so now um, she's done. She's drawn two more. I've told her everything's correct. Remember, if there were bag cards in a more higher player game, players would get to draw more cards. But in a two-player game, she draws her cards back up. We continue um, to push our luck. And so far, we're doing really well. Jen has found... Remember, I told her we need nine tools. She has found three of the tools we need, and she knows two types of tools we don't need. So now, it's back to me. I can give her more clues. I don't have to, though. I could also spend gold to revive a clue and then use it again to tell her, hey, we don't need acid anymore, or we don't need, um, what's it? Hmm. Uh, let's see here. Do I want to try and let her know we need heavy equipment? Because she hasn't put any heavy equipment out. And she needs a lot of jackhammers and one battering ram. I will tell her, I'm going to use this clue and say, we need heavy equipment. You, oh uh, yeah. Uh, I'm saying, Jen, you need the tool group heavy equipment. That's all I can say. I can't kind of hem and haw. I can't point at one or the other to give any... All I can say is, we need heavy equipment. So I've used that clue, and I've used up almost all my clues now. All right, and so, and I could pay to get more. I could get, but I'm going to save this for later. It is now Jen's turn. She's got to think about what is she going to play. She says, okay, we need heavy equipment. All right. Which is, again, so she knows we need battering rams, and we need jackhammers. So Jen looks at her hand. And she decides to play. Um, she decides to play. Let's see, what, what is that again? 
She'll play, here's the two cards she's playing. Okay. And then I take a look at them. And again, because there's only the two, it, I'd have to do this in secret if there are more players. But the two of us, I can do it publicly. And I can say, oh, she did two jackhammers. Oh, how delightful. Those were both correct. Because, hey, we need a total of... So now, Jen has found five of the nine cards we need. But she's got to find four more. And I am out of clues. And, um, right. So anyway, so she's done. She's going to draw two more back. She played two, she draws two. Again, that's a, a unique way this works. And so now it's my turn again. I've got one. I could let her answer a question or ask me a question. I would answer yes or no. Or I could pass or I could pay my gold and get a clue back. I'd love to do that. But I want to save the gold so that when we get to him, we can, we, the more gold we have, the more we can get rid of these cubes, which means Jen has a bigger hand, which gives her more flexibility. The more cards she has, the more uh, you know, she can get what she needs. So... I'm, 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 do I let her ask a yes or no question? She can't say, please let me ask it. All, the only communication that's allowed is basically what these say. Am I going to ask, let her ask a yes or no question? Um, okay, I'll say yes. I'm going to do it. This is my last clue unless I throw. And so now Jen has got to think of a good question. Um, now, and if, if I was playing with multiple players, I would say Jen or Daisy or whoever it is, one player would get to ask a question, which is why it's important for me. I don't know who to let ask the question because I wouldn't know for certain who has the most information because I didn't know for certain who was putting stuff in the, uh, in the kitty. So anyway, Jen asks one yes or no question. Jen, I mean, her simple thing could say, yes or no, do I need more jackhammers? Or yes or no, do I, oh, she could say, yes or no, do I need anything more of what I've already played? Or she could say, yes or no, do I need anything um, from the top row of these things? I think that's legal, right? Let's uh, see. Let's double check this. This is the first time I played with the yes or no. Because there, I mean, there are a ton of different types of questions that can make for very interesting, different, varied gameplay, including a lot of these which are only available for three to five players because they give the opportunity for the crew members to interact with each other. Now, they'll never be in a two-player game because Jen doesn't have the rest of the crew to interact with, but, you know, crew members changing cards and talking to each other and stuff like that. So anyway, so I just used the yes or no. It's number 12. There's a little reminder right here. A crew member asked the boss a smart yes or no question, which is answered. Uh, for instance, are more tools required uh, for those types that have already been played? Boss, no. So, I mean, that's a question she could ask. Since they're all right there, and now actually, I think this is kind of cheating because I don't think th these are an optional thing we're supposed to have out. I don't think she can say, hey, are there um, any more in this line? Because, hmm. although it's, I think it's legal. I'm not sure. If this isn't a legal question, then, uh, you know, Paula will, remember, folks, always watch with the Klingon subtitles turned on. So, Jen could say, hey, uh, are anything needed from the top row? Or is anything needed from this left row? Because we've got these laid out this way. So that'd be pretty cool. But again, it's a yes or no question. What is the question she could ask that would give her the most information to make the best use of her remaining cards? Knowing that I don't have any more clues to give her unless I start spending money. And I don't want to spend money. Although, you know what? If we open both of these, I mean, I don't mind spending these three to get five. So maybe it would be okay for me to spend those three to get this back to let Jen narrow down one more type that we don't need, as an example. So what question is Jen going to ask? Well, folks, if you'd like to find out, you can hit that I in the top right corner of the screen to go to the extended playthrough, where we will continue this game, but now from Jen's perspective. You'll see what cards she's got in her hand, what kind of decisions she has to make um, with the limited information she's got, and we'll try to finish this job and get away from the cops. Uh, or you can go to Final Thoughts, your choice in five, four, three, two, one.